Hello everyone and welcome back. Last time, Kilena made it to Riverville. Barely, but she still made it. She was safe, but the problem was that she had no money and nowhere to stay. A lucky roll of the dice had paid for tonight's lodgings, but she only had so much money. However, the town was a center of local commerce, and if Tequila were good at anything, he was trading and crafting. The death of the Lady Madison at the cause of the wolves had opened up a vacancy at the mill for a woodchopper, and so she set out to make ends meet. Chopping the wood brought back memories of watching her daddy do the same when she was a child. The memories were bitter, but she pushed them aside and focused on her work. It was now deep in the evening and the sky was ablaze, almost as if it echoed her own troubled emotions. Or maybe it was comforting her. Or maybe she was simply ascribing emotions to the weather like an idiot. But whatever the reason, it was nice to look at. Another thing that she learned back at the farm was carving smoking pipes. And she was good. The other farmers in the area had always praised the work, courtesy of her half kilo blood. And she could put that to advantage. How am I supposed to pay that much? Bloody cutthroats. A traveller. Walk blessed. What news do you have? An adventurer, huh? I suppose that depends on how daring you are. An old fellow in the Red Ox Inn told me about some kind of well up in the North Wind that's supposed to talk. Pathless magic, they say. I've got no intentions to become fodder for the wolves, so I haven't checked yet. Safe travels. Pathless magic. She had no intention of getting entangled in magic. Just get this fever off her, and she'd be more than happy to never look at a mage again. <sighs> oh my. You just don't get any younger. Are you okay, my dame? Oh. Oh. I sense vibrations. Horrible, bad vibrations. Oh yes, I feel them very strongly. Bad vibrations? Oh yes, something peculiar surrounds you. <gasps> Your aura? Oh, oh, by Malthus, no! Was she going to read her palm too? What about it? It is indigo blue. The color of the dying. It, it must be a magical anomaly, but still, oh, well. that doesn't bode well. But, you're lucky. The stars are on your side. I, just like you, find myself in deep trouble. <laughs> and uh, maybe we can help each other. Alright, how can you help me? I have a special object in stock. A skull. According to the legends, it comes from the midst of the Kiran Desert. And us arcanists refer to it as the Master Skull. Work, work, work. It is a risky experiment. But at midnight, if you balance the skull on your head for one full hour, it might help to reharmonize your aura. Maybe. Look, lady, I wasn't born yesterday. If you want something from me, you're going to have to offer something substantial in return. Not some skull. Oh, such distrust in the cosmic powers. Well, a horse can only be led to the water. The drinking has to be done by the horse itself. <laughs> if it's coin you're after, you shall have it. A couple of days ago, something precious was stolen from me. My beauty potion. And until yesterday, I was in the dark as to who took it. A vision has shed light onto the matter. It was an aura thief. An aura thief? Yes. Old beings from past times, way before the Pyreans. For common eyes, they are invisible, but we, spiritually gifted, can see them. Aura thieves only have one reason for existence, and that is to disrupt harmony by playing horrible pranks on innocent people. 
such as the theft of my potion. You sure it wasn't some rainbow colored unicorn? <sighs> Unicorns are fairy tales, you should know that. It was an aura thief. I can feel that deep within me. Did you really say beauty potion? Yes. Its essence is fresh water directly from the sources of Inodan. A real rarity, you see. <laughs> but it is as potent as it is exquisite. To those who drink it regularly, the potion grants both an otherworldly allure, <laughs> as well as it completely stops natural aging. <laughs> and before you ask, yes. Only through the elixir was I able to maintain my youthful beauty over all these years. Alright lady, if you say so. I have a suspicion. Yesterday, when I danced at the river, I heard a voice out of nowhere whispering right into my ear. And it only said six words. Find me in the clear water cave. I'm sure it was the potion who spoke to me, but I'm too old to go exploring old caves like this one on my own, which is sad since said cave is only a few minutes march from the village. <laughs> it's an abandoned mine just up the hill that leads to the pass. Go there and find my potion, and I will reward you most generously. Mm -hmm. I supposed to pay that much? Bloody cunning. That lady must think her a fool. At least make the con believable. Thanks again! I couldn't have done it without you! Yo, Hunter. What's the situation out there? Uh, don't ask. The wolves act as if they've been cursed, attacking anything and anyone on sight and killing game they don't even eat afterwards. This must be the red madness everyone's talking about. Oh, my. <sighs> oh blazes. Where's this supposed to lead? I'm new to the region. Any tips? Tips? <sighs> it just be wary if you're outside city walls. I guess you've noticed as much already, but this country has seen you would already guessed that the wolves weren't behaving normally. Farewell. Wolves are wolves, and bandits were bandits. Regardless of where on Vim you were. A priest. The apothecary had said to speak to the priest here. Walk blessed, my child. How may I help you? I'm not well. Can you heal me? Let me see. Hmm, yes. That is no injury light magic couldn't heal. Malthus bless this body. Rid it of its afflictions and endow it with life, path abidingness and new strength. May your light guide this soul. Is there any news recently? Well, I suppose that depends on what you deem as interesting. I am certain you have heard about the tragic events in Ark. Apparently the Magister who murdered those children was from Riverville himself. And then there's the Mayor's wife. She's been sick for moons now, and even I cannot help her. Dreadful times are these, truly. I wish I could do more. Good priest, I'm an outlander. Can you explain what this path is? Ha <laughs> ha, what it is? Now that's quite the question you're asking there. But fine, why not? The path is two things. For one, it is the name of holy writing that encompasses both the revelation of the Lightborn after the fall of the Eterna King, Azartaron, and the journey of the first vassals to Enderal, who founded this country under Malthus's guidance. It also tells us the virtue of the path, the ideals by which every Endralean should live, which is the only way to salvation. Secondly, it is the holy calling of each Endralean citizen. A holy calling? Yes. Only a people united in flesh and spirit shall prevail throughout the ages. Verse 39. There's the path of the manufacturers, whose hard work provides for the iron and food of our people. Then there's the path of the erudites, who follow professions that require higher knowledge, such as scribery and alchemy. And then there are the sublime, who were born to lead our country. Within one's path, a person is free to choose. 
but to cross those borders is almost always blasphemy. Almost always? There are exceptions in which a soul's destiny unveils only later in its life. For example, there was Laura Mortarblade, who was born to the manufacturer's path, but who became one of the most fabled keepers of Enderal. But they are what they are, exceptions. The revelation of the Lightborn, what's that? Yes. Now oh, don't tell me you've never heard of that before. It is recounted the same way in the entire civilized world. It was the Lightborn who saved this world from the chaos it fell into after Azatron's death. What are these first vassals? Yes. Enderal was, other than countries such as Nerim, Kira, or wherever you come from, an uncharted land. It was Malphus himself who showed a young couple, Selna and Keteron, and their followers the way to Enderal. But it would take far too long to recite that entire tale, and I doubt you have that much time. If you are interested in their journey, I suggest you read The Path. It is good for the soul anyway, even for an outlander. I see. Thank you for taking the time to explain. You are welcome, child. Walk blessed. She'd never been one for religion. And frankly, what the priest said was new to her. There really was a lot to pick up. Especially if Enderal was as religious as she'd come to learn. But the healing hadn't fixed the fever. Looks like it wouldn't be that easy. Yes? I'm new here. Is there any work I can do? Work, huh? If you know a thing or two about herbs and the healing arts, you should talk to the mayor. His companion has been sick for moons now. Poor Mathilda. I've never met a woman more generous than her. She doesn't deserve that. Heh. <laughs> if the herb woman was as incompetent as she seemed, then it made sense that they had trouble curing the mayor's wife. Beauty potion. But Kilena wasn't a master herbalist either. So the poor mayor's wife would get no help from her. Looks like she hadn't lost her skill because the merchants were more than ready to buy her goods. They bargained hard, and she didn't have the skill to counter them, but it still put money in her pocket. Beggars can't be choosers, unfortunately. Uh-huh. Now, I just put them out for you to look at. Tell me what you need, and be quick about it. She reinvested the money from selling the pipes into purchasing plans for crafting armor and weapons. At this point, we're going to lose money on these, but they give us experience, so you can use the money from chopping wood to gain experience by crafting. Elena practiced her smithing on iron daggers. They were simple, it didn't take many materials, but gave her valuable experience at the craft. Looks like all crafting gives you the same experience, so I'm sticking to the cheapest items. The spare parts are the bottleneck so far. She wisely invests her leftover money in purchasing books to improve her skills. Handicraft and marksmanship are the focus. She also dreams of the same standing stones she saw when she was drowning. Concentrating on one of the stones awakens some memories of shooting the bow and picking locks. But she's sure she's never done those things, at least not to the level of proficiency that she now remembers. Why would she remember these things? But somehow, she knows she's better at the bow. She's more accurate when practicing against the dummies. But the only way to truly find out is to test her skills against actual enemies. The guard had mentioned that the beach was a relatively safe place to scavenge. Kilena remembered that the beach had crabs. They were slow enough that she felt confident about keeping her distance. She was definitely more effective at the bow. She instinctively knew where the weak spots were. Somehow, Her overconfidence almost cost her, however. Swimming over to the other beaches proved just how dangerous things were as the skeleton shot at her and pierced her armor. <coughs> Luckily, these things didn't seem to be able to swim. That was strange to her. Why would a pile of bones worry about drowning? But she wasn't going to question her good fortune. That kid and his riddles had been a godsend in giving her some starting funds and that made her curious about what else could be found on the foothills overlooking the village. What the? Traveller up ahead! Get up! Curiosity killed the cat, 
They nearly killed the killer woman. Hold on. That wasn't the meat. Someone's there. But she uses the rocks as cover and manages to take out the bandit with the bow. Look at that. A lonesome traveler. You shouldn't have come here. She'd heard that the bandits were hard headed. But tanking arrows to the face was a bit much for Kilena. Yeah, that used to be a bandit. But then she took an axe to the knee. Human flesh? Were these bandits cannibals too? Clearly they deserved no mercy. She'd feed them to the animals. But as she pulled their bodies, she reconsidered. They were dead, and abusing their bodies was nothing but plain revenge. She gave them a sending off in accordance to their own customs. Maybe they'd find some peace in the afterlife. She'd barely kept her own life though. She was loath to just start shooting at random people she met. But she'd better be more careful. The camp was simple, suitable for simple people. Some bread, some stew, a nice cozy fire. Maybe these bandits weren't that different from her. She thought about all this. Were bandits like this because they'd been cast out? Or had they been cast out because they were like this? Was it possible to redeem them from this life? It was a classic chicken and egg problem. Did the chicken come first or did the egg? She woke to a dreary morning and made her way to the temple. She now had enough money to eat and a place to sleep. It was time to think about this Arcanist's fever sickness. Maybe the priest would be stronger in his deity's presence. My dame. My dame. Hello. How about that? Another traveller. I thought I was the only one still travelling these lands. Any news of the world? <sighs> That's a good question. Let me think. I'm not sure if this helps, but an innkeeper told me lately that because of the Red Madness, very few prospectors are bold enough to go to the Shadow Steel Mines in the Powder Desert anymore. If you have the smithing skills and want to find some precious ore, you should check one of the mines there. The mention of smithing perked her ears. May his light guide you. Shadow steel mines in the powder desert. Something to keep in mind in the future. Looks like Ender Rylan sang their hymns in some strange language that she couldn't hope to understand. She recognized the word Mephalus though. She wasn't the religious type, but even she had to admit that the place inspired the soul. Religions were good at that, if mm -hmm. nothing else. Walk blessed, madame. Walk blessed, my child. How may I help you? The priest had nothing further to say, unfortunately. Walk blessed, madame. It looks like the gods were silent, like their statues, on her need. My dame. Jesper was her only hope of dealing with his arcanist fever. She recycled the daggers she'd made back into iron ingots and used those to improve her gear. It wasn't much, but she needed every little bit of help right now. You don't seem to get experience from improving gear. She'd done as much as she could at the moment, and her illness wasn't getting any better. She looked for the Magister's friend that Jasper had asked her to speak to. Um, uh, who are you? Just a traveler. You're Alfred, right? Magister Yero's friend? A uh, Yero... I... Uh, this is about his death, isn't it? Uh, the Rampage. You know about this? Of course, who hasn't? Yeriel was one of us, after all. It is... Terrible. Simply terrible. Uh, you want to hear an old man's opinion, though? I... I always expected that something like this would happen. Malthus, forgive me for talking about a keeper like that, but it's the truth. How did you know that this was going to happen? Hard to explain, really. 
Come on, let's find somewhere to sit. Uh, it'll be easier to talk that way. As long as I can remember, Yarrow and I were getting into trouble together. At least, until his mother died. Not a bold I assume. No. Bandits killed her in broad daylight on, on Penny Road. Today these incidents are common, but not back then. The road was considered safe. Very safe. She was on her way to Ark, accompanied by three other women, and they were set upon at the pass. None of them survived. Yarrow was shattered. I think the worst part was how his father went downhill after his wife's death. The fishery decayed, and the poor guy filled his days with boozing and sleeping. It changed Yarrow forever. How exactly? Well, that's a good question. On the one hand, he became a man, despite his tender age. On the other hand, something inside him woke up, so to speak. A desire to make more of his life. Old Mother Jenica noticed it and took him under her wing. He learned how to read and write, and soon he knew all the holy verses by heart. When he didn't have to help his drunken father, he helped in the village as much as he could. It seems like it drove him forward. Isn't that good? Indeed, that's one way to look at it. It wasn't long before he was the, the jewel of the village. The striving young fisherman destined for great things, even though he was only on the path of a manufacturer. And then the inevitable happened. A keeper of the order came to Riverville to see the prodigy with his own eyes. And behold, in addition to Yero's ingenuity, he also had a slumbering, magical talent. The Keeper took him away, and a few months later, he started his novitiate. Since then, I've only seen him once or twice, as he rarely visited Riverville. I, I don't think he ever noticed how much that hurt me. You're saying it's uncommon for that to happen? <laughs> if one of the manufacturers makes it to Sergeant of the Guard, it's reason enough for a bard song. He must have been the first novice in centuries who was not of the sublime path. So yes, it is uncommon. More than that. What did you mean when you said you knew this would happen? Oh, it's hard to explain. I believe it was the way he was talking about his grand plans. How he wanted to make the world a better place, to become the greatest keeper since Lorem Waterblade. Underneath all this there was a... there was an anger. An anger mixed with deep grief and disappointment. Uh, I don't think he was aware of it because he drew all his strength from that anger. The strength to do all this, to, to learn and to work day and night, but it frightened me, like the Blue Death. It slumbers inside the pathless mage who believes he can master magic without the Order's help. At first, it grants power, but then, one day, it bursts out in an unholy wave of destruction, turning him into one of the monsters in the old songs. <sighs> Um, anyway, I'm just an old man. What do I know about these matters? Now let me go to sleep, my dame. All these memories are making me weary. Anger. Passion can build, but passion can also destroy. It looks like this Yarrow never let go of his anger. 
even after becoming a high-ranked keeper. But Alfred had only known him when they were children, and people change. Surely Yarrow hadn't gone crazy from anger at his mother's death so long ago. There was something missing here. Why now? Why not years or decades ago? Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.